China. Cathay as it was once called. The fabled source of exotic and valuable products. Silk, fine porcelain ware, tea, medicines of many kinds, all coveted by European traders. The Silk Road, winding for thousands of miles overland through places infested with brigands, once brought these goods to European markets. But by the 18th century, Europe had made sea lanes its new highways. England, on its way to becoming the mistress of the seas, established a giant mercantile corporation, the East India Trading Company, and a never-ending flotilla of ships sailed from England around the southern tip of Africa to China to carry back to European markets the riches of the Orient. Often enough, these ships would make for Australia to drop off a load of prisoners at the new penal colony before making their way to the China coast. Two of the ships from the first fleet in 1788, the Scarborough and the Charlotte, were looping around to the northeast when they happened on a number of small coral atolls around the equator and to the north. The islands were named for the ship captains, William Marshall and Thomas Gilbert. A few years earlier, in 1783, an East India merchantman, the Antelope, was returning from China when it was caught in a storm near Palau. The Antelope sank, but the crew made it to Oolong Island. It was there that the ship's captain, Henry Wilson, set up camp. In time, he befriended the chief of Karor, known as Ibadul. Wilson was carried out to meet the chief in his canoe, and before long, Palauans and Englishmen were sharing tea and biscuits for breakfast. But this was not all Wilson shared with Ibadul. To demonstrate the power of a musket, he brought down a fowl with a single shot, while the people watched in astonishment. Wilson's lesson was not lost on the chief and his men from Karor. The British were invited to fight alongside the forces of Karor as they raided their old rival Malekiok and later made an attack on the nearby island of Peleliu. Wilson was in Palau for only three months while he fitted out a small boat that he and his crew could sail to Asia. With the consent of Ibadul, the British took the chief's son, Li Bu, back to England aboard their new ship. There, he became the darling of high society before dying of smallpox just six months after his arrival. Wilson and his crew had introduced Palauans to firearms and gunpowder. Even after he and the rest of the crew set sail, he left behind one of his men, Madden Blanchard, to teach the islanders how to use guns and cannons. For the next hundred years, these weapons would be the most coveted trade good. Guns would play a key role in the contest for political ascendancy among the highly competitive villages in Palau and so alter the alignment of villages 
in the local political system over the next century. The British East India Company was not the only player in the China trade. Ships from other nations, from Europe, from North America, and from the Philippines claimed their own share of the lucrative commerce. They gathered beche de mer, turtle shell, sandalwood, whatever they could find that might be used as barter with the Chinese merchants. Beginning in the late 1700s and through the early years of the 1800s, they came. Vessels bound for China, crisscrossing the Pacific. Some of them stopped to barter for shell and beche de mer. Some of them merely sighted islands on which they bestowed names. A few of the names survive even to the present. South of Palau is Helen's Reef, named after an East India Company ship. The captain of a beche de mer trader out of Manila gave his name to Dublon Island in Chuk Lagoon. James Mortlock, the captain of an India man, left his mark on the island group just south of Chuk Lagoon that even today we know as the Mortlock Islands. Then, as quickly as a China trade appeared, it was gone. It was one of those passing commercial phases in the story of the Pacific, a comet that blazed a trail across the sky before it was extinguished. But another comet was just beginning to appear, another major commercial venture one that was destined to have an even larger impact on the islands.